Hi guys, uh, I'm Coach Moore here uh, at NCSA Athletic Recruiting, part of the men's basketball department here. We have Coach Tim Groves uh, with us. Coach, thanks for coming and uh, taking a little time to talk about recruiting and talk about your program there uh, at the University of Northwestern. I'm excited to be with you, John. Well, Coach, uh, again, we're just going to kind of go through and learn a little bit more about your program. Just start off here. Tell us a little bit more about your school and what makes uh, the University of Northwestern unique as a school, but also as a basketball program. Sure, I'd love to. Uh, we are located in the, the Twin Cities, of uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul here in Minnesota. Uh, we have a beautiful campus. Uh, we're on a lake, uh, Lake Johanna. It's very wooded, very private, secluded feel to it. Uh, we're actually in a suburb of the Twin Cities called Roseville, which is a great suburb. You know, everything you'd ever need, you would never have to leave it if you really didn't want to. But we're both uh, 10, 15 minutes from uh, both downtown Minneapolis, downtown St. Paul. So everything, you know, a major metropolitan area has to offer, as well as the University of Minnesota is, uh, you know, a Division One institution real close to us here. So it's a great place uh, to go to school, great place to live. You know, you have the change of seasons, you know, distinct seasons with uh, fall, uh, winter, spring, and summer. We do get snow. It can get cold. But uh, we do have kids. You know, we've got kids from Arizona, Florida, Texas, you know, California uh, who have loved it. A lot of them have ended up staying even after they graduate. So uh, a lot of great internship and job opportunities after college, too, uh, and a great community to be part of. We are a, a, a Christian liberal arts university. So not only do we focus on the academics um, and having a strong basketball program, uh, we also focus on the spiritual piece. The faith component uh, is very integral in, in our campus life and on our basketball team. So uh, you know, I think we're a great option for young men that are looking for a, a Christian liberal arts university uh, where they're going to grow in their faith, get a great education, and be part of a, a very successful basketball program. So it sounds like you guys do offer some pretty unique things there overall as far as location is, as well as, you know, the program, which is definitely good. Uh, Coach, fill me in. What, what are some of the goals that you set for your program each and every year? You know, our goals, we really we really talk about, you know, we working hard and getting better. You know, we really focus on, on those two things, and uh, those are the two things we really feel like we can control and then we see where those things take us, where, where our work ethic, you know, our being very coachable, having great attitudes, being a great teammate. We, we really, really focus on all those intangible things. And then our goal is to just keep getting better. And, uh, and like I said, at the end of the year, we kind of see where we're at. And for me personally, for, you know, our individual play, for our players at Northwestern, you know, we always uh, want them to, to grow in their faith. Uh, we want them to earn their degree and we want them to maximize their God-given abilities within a team concept. And we feel like if those three things are happening, um, that that's been a very successful year for us or a very successful you know, season or career for our individual players. Okay. And then I was doing some research on you guys' program. Uh, obviously, we, we always encourage all of our student athletes to do you know, research on the program. I see that you guys have had great success since you took over the program in 2000. Fill me in with some of the expectations going into every season, especially since you guys have experienced so much success uh, across the board. It has been. We've had a lot of success. Very proud of the guys. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of good players here over the years. And like you said, in the previous 15 years I've been here, you know, we've been able to win our conference 12 of those 15 years. And I'd like to add to that, too, that three years we didn't win it, we finished second and had a really good chance to win it. Uh, we've been to 10 national tournaments in that time. We started out as an NAI school when I was here at NAI Division II. Uh, we transitioned to an NCAA Division III school. Been in that national tournament the last five years uh, since our conference has had an AQ into that tournament. Uh, last year was our best showing. Uh, we made it to the Sweet 16, beat the number three team in the country, uh, University of St. Thomas, in the first round on a, a buzzer beater, uh, one by one on a three point shot. It was pretty fun. It was on top ten plays of the night on ESPN that night, number four play. And so we were watching that in the hotel, having a great time with that. <laughs> beat a very good Elmhurst College team uh, in the uh, second round uh, before losing to uh, East Texas Baptist University in the Sweet 16. 
Uh, we also are affiliated with the National Christian College Division One, uh, which is mostly made up of NCAA Division Two and NAI Division One and Two schools. And uh, we were able to win that national championship um, in 2010, uh, which was a real big accomplishment for us. We beat two NAI one schools. You know, they were given 11 full rides, and the D2 in the championship was given 10 full rides. So, for a Division Three school, you know, it's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty special thing. So obviously, in, in saying that, John, I mean our expectations every year are, are high. You know, we've had a lot of success. We want to continue that and continue to build on that and, and, and get even better. But we really don't set a, a number of wins or, or uh, even you know, winning the conference or going to the national tournament. Our, our challenge really is to our guys is to play great basketball and, and uh, to, to have even a higher standard than winning, to be the absolute best we can be as a program, as an individual, me as a coach, and then see where that takes us. So I've been a big John Wooden fan my whole life, and you know, that was Coach Wooden's philosophy too, was not even compare yourself to others, but just to be the best you absolutely could be. And, and we've kind of instilled that in our program. I, you know, our guys, I think it, it's really helped us maintain our success to keep pushing and, and kind of never being satisfied. Okay, good, good. And then obviously with the success you guys have had, Obviously, it comes a, a great culture that you start to build as a program, as a staff, and obviously a culture that your kids are going to. Tell us a little bit, what kind of culture do you guys want to instill in every team that comes through? I think culture is so huge, and, and we kind of you know, had a line the years I've been here, you know, that culture beats talent. And, uh and, and I really believe that, and I think our kids really believe that, too, that if you can create that special environment, uh, that special culture, um, obviously you have to have some talent to beat talent, but, but you, can, uh, you can overcome maybe teams that are better than you on paper with that really strong culture. So uh, part of our, our, uh, our daily practice plan is we do have like a, a huddle time, uh, a devotional time, uh, where we talk about a lot of these things. You know, we talk about our core values, uh, we talk about, uh, you know, what our goals each particular game and practice are and, uh, and how does that look, you know, what, what does that look like on the court, how do we break that down. So we, we spend a lot of time off the court building our culture that, that hopefully then gets exhibited on the court. And, and I would say, too, the other big thing is leadership. Our, our, our seniors uh, mentor uh, our younger players and, and kind of take them under their wings and expose them to Northwestern basketball. You know, what are the expectations? You know, what are we all about? And, uh, and, and help instill that. And then I would say through the recruiting process, too, you know, we're really looking for young men that fit that culture and, and trying to identify those young men and then recruit uh, those guys the, the, uh, the hardest. So, you know, we're recruiting kids that fit our culture, and then when they get into, you know, into our culture, our older guys as well as us as coaches are hel- helping them uh, you know, develop what it means to be a, a Northwestern basketball player. And you kind of touched a little bit on our next question of, of, you know, once we start to talk about a little bit more recruiting, and I love the fact that you said that you guys look for certain things in student-athletes that's going to be a good part of you guys' culture. What are some of those things that you guys look for in a student-athlete through the recruiting process for your program? Well, for us, again, the, the distinctive of being a Christian liberal arts university, you know, we are looking for young men and, and families that do desire, uh, you know, a Christian-based school and do desire to, to grow and, and mature in their faith, you know. So that's, that's number one for us. We're looking for high-character guys that when we talk to their, their high school coach or their AAU coach, uh, they're guys that are, are leaders in their schools, guys who are, are making, you know, good decisions, you know, not perfect, and none of us are perfect, but guys that are making good decisions that, you know, teachers at that school or principals at that school or coaches would say, oh, yeah, that's a great kid, outstanding work ethic, you know, responsible young man. So things like that are, are huge. Obviously, the academic piece, we want them to succeed uh, at the university. Uh, so we're looking for, you know, young men that, that are doing well academically, but not just, you know, necessarily a certain GPA or, or, or ACT score, but, you know, that work ethic in the classroom. And then on the court, too, uh, we're looking very, very much for players who are unselfish players, uh, who really desire to be part of something bigger than themselves, who are very thankful 
passionate, humble words would, would come to my mind as, as I'm going through the recruiting process of the young men we're talking to. Okay, good. And then you guys were NAI, uh, switch over to Division Three. You guys are part of the NCCAA. So fill me in, what is you guys' timeline for your school when you start to target, identify, and then hopefully land a recruit? Uh, and if you can talk a little bit about what your timeline is now and possibly how that shifted or changed from NAI to Division Three. Right. I'll start with the, the end of the question first. We were a unique NAI school and conference in the sense that we did not give athletic scholarships. So we, we literally were the only conference in, in the NAI that was non-scholarship at that point, and that was one of the reasons we switched to the D Division Three because just philosophically it fit our institution better. So the timeline for us, and again, with, with Division Three, with not having athletic scholarships, you know, our focus primarily is on a year at a time. You know, so we wrap up, last year we wrapped up 2015 recruiting class, probably late March, early April. And at that point, you know, we really move on to our 2016 kids, uh, really, you know, try to identify them, find out what AAU teams are playing on, what tournaments they're at, uh, and then, you know, really spend the spring and the summer, you know, watching, evaluating, you know, talking to them a lot. So, you know, I would say, for the most part, it's a year. Now, the NCAA obviously just changed some rules uh, with being able to recruit juniors, you know, off campus too and, uh, and talk to juniors off campus at, at tournaments or at their high school games. So that has changed a little bit where we are starting to focus a little more on juniors too um, at this point and follow up some with them, you know, where we can. So it's, it's, you know, it's a year to two process, but we do sometimes identify, you know, 2018 or even 2019 young men that might be interested, and, and we, we'll definitely get them into our database and get them on our mailing list, invite them to campus to different games, invite them to our camps throughout the summer, um, and try to connect with them that way too. But I would say the real heavy lifting, we, we really try to focus on uh, one class at a time. Kind of spin it off of that question a little bit. You talk about how you guys will identify, you know, some kids that's a little bit younger uh, early in their process as well. Is that more of that that kid reaching out to you guys? I'm assuming it's more so of the kid kind of touching base with you than you guys going out and pursuing that kid. Is that accurate? Correct. Yeah, I would say it's more somebody contacting us. You know, we have uh, obviously a lot of alumni uh, in the area and in different states, you know, former players of mine who are now coaches, you know, who will say, you know, hey, coach, we have this sophomore that's really, really good for us. You know, you really should watch him. And I'll say, well, you know, give me his information and, you know, we'll follow up with them. And if I'm out at a AU tournament, you know, watching somebody else, you know, hopefully I get a break or maybe I can come over and watch, you know, maybe this 15 or 16-year-old, you know, young man play too. So a lot of it is, is leads generated uh, from people who have an interest, you know, in our program and are trying to help us out. And then the second part of that question is, I know you kind of touched base on, you know, those younger kids, you guys try to get them some camp information and get them on campus to go through you guys' camps. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, how important is camp, you know, for a kid to get on your campus and go to a camp? Do you guys recruit from that? Is that something that you push heavily on, on kids who do want to be, you know, a future part of your program? We do. I mean, we really, we, we like to, you know, get people who, who are recruiting, you know, to come to camp. Um, I think it's a great way for them to be around us, for us to be around them, for them to experience, you know, see the campus, you know, firsthand. So, yeah, I think it's very, very valuable. Um, is it a, you know, is it a must? By no means. You know, I know kids are so busy with their high school teams, with their AU clubs, that a lot of times it's hard to even fit in a camp. So, you know, we'll, we'll offer it, you know, encourage them to come. Uh, we're always you know, appreciative when they come, but it's, it's obviously, like, not a, a requirement uh, that they be there for us to recruit them. But I think it is beneficial for both. It, it helps us see them for a week, get to coach them for a week, and for them to experience, you know, our coaching, our philosophy, our style, too. 
Good, good. And I know a lot of kids talk about camp, so that's always a, a great topic to kind of touch on. Uh, you've been around in coaching for quite a while, so I think this would be a great question and some great feedback for our families. But fill me in with some things in your opinion are, you know, maybe two or three things that student athletes should all do and maybe two or three things that, that student athletes absolutely should not do in the recruiting process. That's a great big question, but but a uh, very good question. You know, I think I think the biggest thing to me in the recruiting process that I tell kids and families are you need to you need to go experience the school. I always say, you know, coaches are paid to be recruiters, admissions folks are paid to be recruiters. Everyone's website is going to look great. Everyone's brochures are going to look great. But is what you're reading, is what you're hearing, is what you're experiencing truly what's going on on that campus at, at that college or university. And to me, the best way to know that is to do an overnight visit, to get in the dorms, to sit in on classes, you know, to get away from the coaches and admissions people and really feel like, okay, this, this is what's going on here. And my gut feeling tells me this is a place, you know, I'd love to be. Uh, I'd love to be and I could see myself an experience. So, uh, to me, that overnight visit is just so, so crucial. And then the second thing I would say, too, is get around the players on the team because those are going to be, you know, significant people in your life, you know, for the next, you know, four years. Are those people that I, you know, enjoy hanging around with, you know, have similar values, you know, similar philosophies, you know, because you might love the coach at that program, but if you don't like your teammates, you're going to be miserable. So I think you need to get around the guys on the team and, and just get that feel that way too. So to me the biggest two things are the overnight visits and then uh, getting around the players on the team. And we always say here our, our best recruiters, and again I think because our culture is so strong, our best recruiters are our players. I love getting recruits around our players and me just getting out of the way and let them talk about our program and us as coaches and their teammates. Uh, so those would be the two biggest things for me that I would, if I was a recruit or a parent of a recruit that I would do. What I wouldn't do, I definitely would not make my decision uh, without really thoroughly, you know, investigating, you know, those schools, like I said, through the overnight visit and through hanging out with the team. And then I'm trying to think what else I wouldn't do. I, I probably, too, wouldn't make my decision without looking at uh, a variety of schools, uh, you know, maybe different locations. You know, maybe a private school versus a state school. Um, I, I think it's good to experience as many different schools within reason as you can uh, on visits to uh, either reinforce what you're thinking or to possibly change your mind what you're thinking. All great advice. The last question here I have for you, Coach, is, you know, and this I guess would be for all, you know, kids of all ages or in all different spots of the recruiting process. We're just – you know, three or four basic things that each recruit uh, should do that you're going to look for in that recruit. So just basic, not necessarily has to be, you know, academic or anything, but just basics that every single student athlete uh, should have or should at least have a mentality of that you're going to look for in a recruit. What I would say, I mean, is be responsible. You know, if coaches are texting you or, or leaving you messages, you know, be be timely in those responses. Um, you know, re respond first of all, but then also be timely in those responses. Uh, I think all of us as coaches are looking for, you know, young men that are responsible. So show that. I I would say, you know, identify schools you're really interested in, and and most of us now have you know places where you can sign in on websites, research, find out which schools you're really interested in, and and sign in on uh, sign in on those websites. And then that obviously lets the coach know and the school know that you're interested also. And then the last thing, I know this sounds really simple too, but just, you know, in the process, uh, you know, just to be really transparent, you know, to really let the, let the coach know, you know, what you're thinking, you know, what your options are. I think most of us as coaches, you know, obviously selfishly we want good players and good kids and good fits for our school, but hopefully all of us also want what's, best for the student athletes and if it's not a particular institution I think we all can move on and we have other kids who are recruiting so I was I was telling young men I said the second best answer is no you know and then no as early as possible um, if, if you're not interested so I would say just be real honest uh, with, with the coaches that you're talking with 
through that recruiting process would be the other thing that really stands out to me.